Right, so seems to be the new rig at the moment, but it's not a new rig, it's been out for a long, long time. It's the shot on the hook rig. So I'm going to have a look at other rigs that do the same thing, and I'll show you how to tie the hook and the shot on the hook rig as well. I've seen them, I've seen the little rubber or tungsten um, weights that have come out to put on the hook, but from the ones that I've seen, it looks to me like the hook wouldn't go all the way in to the fish's mouth. Yeah, it looks to me like it might result in a few hook pulls. It doesn't, it doesn't look like it would move out the way and allow the hook to go right into the fish's mouth. So I'm gonna tie it up the old way and explain a little bit why that's probably better than using the new weights that have come out. Um, and then I'll show you a couple of rigs as well that does the same thing, which are probably safer than putting a shot on the hook. Um, so we'll go through a couple of rigs. Okay, so how to put the shot on the hook um, safer than the little weights that have been coming out. That's one of my rigs, just coated braid through to a choddy hook, choddy wide gape, and then I've kept the hair nice and supple so the rig's quite stiff uh, in itself, but the hair's still quite supple, which is how I kind of like to have it. So for the shot on the hook, I've got a little bit of braid that I had left over. And all I'm gonna do is make one overhand knot. That's all it needs to be. So just make a little turn like that, just the normal overhand knot. Um, let's just see what I'm doing. <laughs> Can't see what I'm doing, but yeah, just a simple overhand knot. I've uh, got my little split shot there. So, what I'm going to do is take my hook, put the loop of the overhand knot there onto end of the hook where I want it and pull it down leave a little bit of a tag end blob this one a little bit already but leave a bit of a tag end take your lighter and blob that end of it what to do then pull the knot tight and that will pull up against the tag end that we've just blobbed now, doing it that way means that that will move much easier than these rubber or tungsten beads that you have to thread on a hook. So, in my opinion, these are going to be better this way and something that's a little bit harder to move on the hook. So all I'm doing now is put my split shot on. I ain't got my pliers handy, so I'll just squeeze it with my teeth. Okay, so I've got that on there now. Just like that. Just get the hair out of the way. So just like that. And I'm going to take my scissors. You don't have to cut it right up close to the uh, split shot, leave a little bit of a tag end, take your lighter again, lob that end of it, and that is your shot on the hook. Like I said, that moves really, really easily, and that's for me, I'd rather, I'd rather it do that than be really, really stuck to the bend of the hook. So once that hook goes in, that shot can move right out of the way and you get a proper hook hold. So having it like that, much better in my opinion. I think what it will give you too, if you have a pickup, something picks up the bait uh, and it ends up spitting it out, this most likely will move a little bit and that will give you an indication that you've been done. So yeah, that's the shot on the hook rig. You can see 
the way that I've done my turns, my hair is um, coming out from way down the shank of the hook. That's just going to help weigh that point down even more than the split shot is. There's other ways of doing this. There's other ways of making the hook point heavier, um, which I would rather use. I don't like to use this rig. I'm too worried about getting hook pulls or the shot coming off or something happening. I don't think there's any need for it when there's other rigs that you can use that do the same thing. So that's how you put the shot on the hook anyway. Okay, so as I said already, a lot of my rigs, unless it's a blowback rig, I'll have it like this, just a simple hair rig, but I have it so that the hair is actually coming off way before the point of the hook. Now, for different hooks, different hook patterns, I will change where this hair comes out and I'll show you how I do it. It might be a little bit anal in the way that I do it, but it, it makes it easier for me to make sense of where I need to have the hair coming off the hook. So that's one way of doing it. So as the fish picks that up, it's going to make the point of the hook heavy. I'll show you how it works now. Okay, so nice long hair. I'm using big baits next week. So as this fish picks up the bait, I've got no nails. As the fish picks up the bait, this hook turns straight away like that. Now that you can see how heavy the bottom of that hook is. As that fish makes contact with the lead pulls it up even more and that for me is exactly how I want it now as I said different hook patterns different sizes of hooks are going to do things slightly differently so I'll show you how I experiment if you like uh, on different hook patterns all right so these are the three hook patterns that I've been using I've got crank claw hook and a choddy wide gape hook. Now, this is gonna sound a little bit silly, but for me to see where I want my hair to come off the hook, I'm using a little small screwdriver. It's a magnetic screwdriver. And all I'm gonna do is pick up the hook like that, and I'm gonna move it up and down the shank, move my screwdriver up and down the shank of the hook, and I'm gonna see where my hair needs to come off by using the screwdriver. Right, so what I'm going to do, I've got my claw hook, a size 4, and I've got my screwdriver. Now I'm going to start opposite the barb, and see what it looks like. So you can see it's kind of horizontal we want the point of the hook to be heavy so let's move a little bit closer to the eye of the hook it's starting to get there now so me looking at the point of the screwdriver that's roughly where i want my hair to exit the knot so i would imagine that's for maybe five or six turns and what i'll do i'll move the hair out of the way a couple of turns above it and then complete the knotless knot from there so that's how I want that hook to sit. So now, if I do the same with a choddy wide gate, start opposite the barb, and you can see the point of the hook is still sat kind of flat. So let's move it a bit closer to the eye. There we go. Same sort of distance, I suppose, to the other one. There we go. So again, that's maybe seven or eight turns up, just with um, uncoated braid. So that's that. That's the claw. That's the choddy. Cranks are a little bit harder to do because of the curve on them. But we shall try. Again, opposite the barb. Yeah, show you where that's turning up. So for the crank, we want it a lot further closer to the eye of the hook. Maybe a little bit too close. That's perfect. You can see the distance, the distance changes obviously with the pattern of the hook and it will also change with the size of the hook. So it's worth doing this just, just for the first few times that you tie these rigs and then obviously you'll know the distance that you need. So that's a quick check. 
for me, like I said, I'm quite anal with my uh, rig tying. So you can see the way that I've tied that one. The actual bend of the hook there at the top is, is lower than the point of the hook, but you've got to imagine once that hits the lead, that's going to pull that perfectly down into the vicious mouth. So, yeah. Right, so let's tie one of these rigs. I've got my claw hook, size 4. I've got some of the uncoated braid from Snide Tackle. I'm just going to tie a loop in the end for my hair. Nice and simple, just an overhand knot. My eyes are useless, so I need to use a baiting needle just to pull that through. There we go. Even though it's a, only a knot for the hair, it's still wetting it before I pull it. It's just a good habit to get into. So let me trim the tag end off of that hair. We don't need that. Keep things nice and tidy. I just melt that with a lighter. Right, I'm going to get my hook now. It's going to be quite a long rig this one. I want to try longer rigs fishing next week. Just wetting the end of it through the back of the hook. Pull it through. I've got big baits to fish next week, so we're going to have a long hair on this. Seems about right. Now, start my knotless knot away from me. I don't want my first turn going into that sharp crease that's on the hook. So, the sharp crease that's on the um, eye of the hook where they're, where they're made. So it was roughly, when I checked it with the old screwdriver, it was roughly there. So done enough turns to get there, now I'm going to move the hair out of the way, do a couple of turns above that, two, and then back down, once, twice, and then through, take that again, right, so I've whipped back down again, take the other end of the hook link, wet it a little bit, makes it easier to put it back through the eye of the hook. Oh, that's great. God, I need glasses. Right, pull that through. Now before I pull that tight, every single knotless knot that I do, I've got the hook like that. Now, I'm going to turn it 90 degrees away from me. I'm going to hold the hair in that position. Wet the knot pull it tight. Now what you'll see is that has now come straight off in line with the shank of the hook. Where it's coming through the eye of the hook it's in line with the shank of the hook obviously but my hair is now also in line with the shank of the hook. If I didn't turn it 90 degrees away from me before I tightened it the hair would have ended up around this way. And we don't want that. We want it nice and okay. next. Take a good old next gonna take a good old liner liner. It's important. I've got it on my uh, bait needle already. I've had that on the other end. When you put these on, especially the ones from Snide Tackle, they're very well made. So when you put it on, this braid is okay. If you put it onto a coated braid, you need to wet the braid first. Otherwise, it starts to push the kink up the uh, coated braid. So I'm just going to slide that on. Now, it's important when you put a kicker on or a liner liner, whatever it is you like to use, that it's not a tungsten one. You don't want anything heavy, because the whole point of these rigs is to make the point heavy. And if you do anything to make the eye of the hook heavy, you're taken away from the weight that's at the point of the hook so these are quite light and actually quite easy to use as well so that's on and I'll show you in a second how well that now sits right so let's have a look now all I did was I've just tied a, a loop in the other end that's how long I want the rig so I'm trying longer rigs next week um, <laughs> everybody thinks you know when I get a chance to fish I'm fishing with 
just the rigs that I know work and it's certainly a case for one rod but the other rods I, I have to experiment and find out one if I can tie rigs that single out the bigger fish or if the lake's not been fishing very well uh, try new things and see if I can get a bite but so this is a rigging all finished up got the hair coming out at an angle it's probably one two three or maybe four mil below the point of the hook so when I pick that up you'll see now even with that line of line on as soon as that gets picked up that is in the perfect position that hook point is so much heavier than the eye of the hook and that is in perfect position it's not so far down that it's like that because that's not really making the point very heavy but it's just sitting like that and obviously as the fish makes contact with the lead that'll straighten up even more but the way that is right now that is doing the exact same thing as the shot on the hook was doing but you're going to get a better hook hold so again just my opinion but that's one rig that you can do that will make the point of the hook much heavier okay so the next one good old faithful KD rig so they work better with a crank or a curve shank hook so this is one of the crank size fours very very sharp out the packet I've got another length of the uncoated braid for me I would rather have some of the coated braid and strip a good section of the end off but I don't have any so I'm just tying it with straight uh, soft braid at the moment so same again just do a loop tie the uh, loop in the end for your hair so you can get your bait on now one misconception with a KD rig is people think you have to fish a wafto or a pop-up or a critically balanced bait you don't have to it works better in that way yes but you can still use bottom baits um, especially this time of year you know fish have been eating boilies all year round so having a bottom bait something that's not standing out too much um, can work wonders so same again through the back of the hook I'll just lift it quick through the back of the hook there we go now you don't need to measure this with a KD rig pretty much what you do I want a nice long hair because I'm going to use this with the bottom bait. I want a nice long hair, and I'm going to do two turns away from you again for the first one. One, two. Now I'm going to kick the hair out. And I'm going to carry on doing five, six, maybe seven turns above it. So one, two. Now down back to back of the hook and she goes same thing as I did before I'm going to turn it away from me 90 degrees hold the hair wet it and then pull it and that again has come straight off the shank of the hook if you don't turn it like I said it'll end up away it will end up 90 degrees this way round um, by doing that you get it nice and lined up so with this I won't put a liner on, liner on this one because as the fish picks that up the weight and the angle of that uh, hair coming off the eye of the hook if I put a liner liner on it, it it might stop that from working how it should be so yeah again turning it in my hand turning very quickly so like I said you don't have to use this with wafters or pop-ups um, so what you would do now is stick your bait on and put a small split shot under your bait and that will sit nicely then that will sit out away from the hook and then as the fish picks up the bait again that hook point coming 
right down into the fish's mouth. You have to kind of trust it when it's there, give it a go. So that's a couple of rigs that do the same thing as a shot on the hook rig. I uh, did show you as well. So that's a couple of rigs that do the same thing as the shot on the hook rig does by making the point of the hook heavier. Um, it's worth trying uh, those two rigs as well as trying the shot on the hook rig if the lake that you're fishing allows you to do it. Like I said, I think by tying it on the old way, um, I don't think you're going to get hook pulls like you would on the new sort of rubber and tungsten ones that go right on the hook. One key thing to remember, if you're trying to make the point of the hook heavy, you have to make the eye of the hook very light. Forgotten rigs really, I think, especially the KD rig. Um, it used to do so many bites for me, and I, I don't know why I stopped using it, but certainly next week I'm going to be. Um, yeah, give them a go. The old way of doing the shot on the hook rig, I think, is a lot better. Uh, than these new ones that come out and they're quite tight on the hook but um, give them a go.